Hey everyone, it's the excellent dude again with another Excel how-to video. This video is part two of our series on learning Excel. In this video, we'll do some more intermediate level skills that will build upon the skills you learned in the first video. If you haven't checked out the first video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. Ready to get started? In the last video, we left off with our inventory report for a fictional car dealership, Lemon Motors. I've added a few more cars to the list as well as the model year so we have a little more data to work with for this lesson. One of the keys of any good report is presenting the information in a logical manner. We will begin with some easy ways to sort your data. Let's say you want to have your inventory report display items in a certain order. For example, you want to list the cars with the highest profit first. We would select the first record under the profit heading and then click the data tab and then click the sort Z to A, which means sorting from largest to smallest. A to Z would be sorting from smallest to largest. If you are paying attention, you'll notice that even if you are sorting by a certain column, Excel will update the entire row so you don't have to worry about your data getting all mixed up. Next, you may want to sort by model year from oldest to newest. This would be A to Z, smallest to largest. When you're working with reports, some of the data may not be as important as others. This is where you want to filter your data. When you filter the data, you can hide some information from view so that you can focus on the key information that is most important to you. To begin, we'll highlight the headings and click on the Data tab, and then select the Filter button on the ribbon. You will now notice that there are now drop-down lists on each of the headings. If you click on any of them, you'll see all the possible values that have been entered in the column underneath that particular heading. Let's say we only want to see cars that are 2017 or newer. We can click on the drop-down list on the model year heading, and then we can select all of the years that are older than 2017. But don't worry, when you perform a filter, the data isn't gone forever, it's only hidden. If you notice on the side on the rows, you can see that the numbering is no longer sequential, the rows that were filtered out are hidden. To unfilter your data, you can click Select All in the headings that you originally defined the filter. The other option would be to simply click on the Filter button on the ribbon to turn off filtering entirely. The next idea for filtering for the owner of Lemon Motors might be to only show cars with a profit of more than $5,000. Even with this small list, it would take some effort to deselect all the records you don't want to see. Luckily, there's an option that is much quicker where you can use what is called number filters. You can then choose to only show values greater or equal to $5,000. This is especially helpful when you have a large amount of data. And again, to undo the filter, you can click Select All in the column heading where you defined your filter, or you can click the Filter button on the ribbon to turn off filtering entirely. One of the last concepts I introduced in the first video was your first simple formula. This was calculating profit per vehicle. This was calculated by subtracting the wholesale price from the retail price. Now that we know the potential profit of each car, the owner of Lemon Motors would probably like to know the total profit of all the cars in their inventory. There are a number of ways to do this. The first would be to manually type the price of each car in a formula. The formula would be equals 3,750 plus 5,650 plus 7,800 and so on. Clearly this is not ideal if you have a large number of entries. The second would be use the sum formula. This is where you use a range of cells that we learned about in the first video. In this case the range would be G4 through G13. So the formula would be equals sum open bracket G4 colon G13 and close bracket and enter. Or you can start the sum formula with the equals sum and opening bracket and then you can use your mouse and drag to select the cells and click enter. Even easier is to use the auto sum which is located near the top right of the ribbon under the home tab. Excel is usually pretty accurate at predicting what you want to calculate the sum of but it does sometimes get things wrong, so it's good to know the other ways to calculate sum. 
Here's a neat trick if you want to do a quick sum calculation but you don't need it on your report. You can highlight the cells and then look near the bottom of the worksheet and you'll see the number of items, 10, and their total, $67,195. So now we know the total potential profit of the dealership if all the cars were sold at their retail price. Next we may want to know the average profit per vehicle. For this we can use the average formula. To calculate the average we will use equals, average, opening bracket, and then we can either use the range or highlight the cells and click enter. Next we may want to know the vehicle with the highest profit. For this we'd use the max formula. This would be equals max, open bracket, and again we could use the range or highlight the cells and click enter. And finally we may want to know the vehicle with the lowest profit. In this case we'd use the min formula, which is equal sign, min, opening bracket, and then again you can use the range or highlight the cells and click enter. Excel offers a wide variety of formulas that you can use. If you click on the formulas tab, you can see formulas organized into a wide variety of different applications financial, date and time, and many more. If you hold your mouse above any formula, a tooltip will pop up with the syntax for the formula and a brief description. Next I'm going to show you a way to keep track of what heading you are entering your information under when you have more rows and your title headings are no longer in view. First I'll copy some of the rows and paste them at the end so we have more rows of data and can see what happens when the headings are no longer in view. You may notice I didn't include the inventory number. Here's a chance to do a quick recap from our last video where I introduced the autofill functionality. Excel can see patterns in your data which can make your life easier. We'll highlight a couple of the inventory numbers and then double click when we see the small cross on the square at the bottom right of the range. The autofill functionality will reliably predict the inventory numbers for each row. So now, our headings are out of view, which could make data entry confusing. To make sure you always have the column headings visible, we can use the Freeze Panes functionality. To do this, we'll highlight the first row of data. Then we'll go to the View tab and click Freeze Panes. This will freeze all the panes above this row, so it's like the data is scrolling underneath the headings. Now we can have a super long list of cars and we'll always know under which heading we are entering information. Here's a final fun tip to wind up this video. If you're more of a visual person, you can use conditional formatting to highlight data using colors instead of using sorting or filtering. Let's look at the profit column and highlight the cells. We will then go to the conditional formatting in the Home tab and select Color Scales. We'll select this one as it will highlight the highest profit car in green and color code each entry to the lowest profit car in red. It's almost like a temperature gauge from most profitable to least profitable. I think this is a pretty good point to end this video. I'm hoping that you're gaining more and more confidence using Excel. In the next video, we'll help you increase your mastery of Excel by learning even more advanced skills. If you would like me to present specific topics on Excel, please leave your suggestions for topics in the comment section below. And if you find my videos helpful, please give this video a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing and clicking the notification icon to be notified when I release new videos. Thanks again and have an excellent day.